all right guys so this question is for all the dbas you know so many of you tend to send me a message and say like you know what Arun, we want to jump on to cloud and we want to learn cloud okay awesome you all are doing an amazing job but take this as a dba challenge now understand this guys if you all are trying to move on to cloud or trying to help clients move on to cloud okay so i am a client i have physical systems physical servers and i want you all to convince me why i should move on to cloud because see my physical servers i have done one time investment right so one time investment but on cloud i have to pay recurring right i have to pay charges every month and also on cloud if i don't know if all of you know or if you do not know on cloud i have to pay to the cloud vendor for accessing my own data right there is a uh, data transfer price also so take this as a dba challenge i am an immature businessman and i have a small company where i run my servers on physical and you as a cloud dba convince me why should i move on to the cloud because convincing clients to move to the cloud is also one of the most important skill every dba and database architect must have. That being said, let's start our show. Welcome back guys and let us start right away our show with the first question of the day. I'm just in a hurry to take this show. I don't know why I have such high energy levels today. But still, let's start our show with the first question of the day. How to restore Armin backups on a different node when the directory structures are different very simple and straightforward so guys if you know about two of the most important Armin parameters and these parameters are the ones that help you convert the file names while you are like cloning or transferring the backup files or restoring the uh, backup files on a different server which has a different directory structure right now the first one is like okay before I tell you about the parameters, let us understand the things in a simple way. There are two types of files that you will probably restore using the Armin, right? One is the data file, second would be read block files, correct? So in case on a new server, the directory structure is different. So you need to rename or change the directory locations for the data files or for the log files, right? these are the two files for which you would want to restore into a new location now in this case there is one parameter which is called as db file name convert this will allow you to convert the file names so on your source destination you have a different directory structure now you want to convert that directory structure into the target destination right so on the target destination the complete directory structure is different so db file name convert you give the source directory structure comma you give the target directory structure so what armin will do is it will replace the entire directory structure of the target onto the source data file and then it will perform the restore into the new location the same thing goes with log file name convert so this log file name convert parameter will allow armin to change the locations for the redo log files simple straightforward two parameters and i guess guys if you are sitting in an interview and if there is an interview question regarding Armin cloning, these two parameters are very, very, very important and you must know about these parameters. I would request you all to read about these two parameters, very simple, straightforward. And also guys, you might have this question, what if the directory structure is exactly same? You don't have to do anything, right? Because Armin will restore into the same location as the source server so if the directory structures and locations are same no need to use this parameter meanwhile let's jump on to the next question of the day we have a db link that connects to production server what will happen to db link if there is a failover or switchover amazing question now if you know about the data guard networking right so i think i have talked about this in the earlier episodes also so in data guard what happens is you create a service you do not connect to primary or you do not connect to standby the problem is if you are directly connecting to the primary server let's say you perform the switch over or failover what will happen is the application will break because application will try to connect to the same primary server which is no more primary right let's say it got crashed or there is a switch over so what you do is 
in the data guard networking you actually create a service so now this service that you created on primary the beauty about this service is it will run only on the primary server so let's take this is the primary and this is the standby right so on primary server the service is up and running now you perform a switch over right so the standby now becomes primary and the primary became standby remember what i said earlier the service will always run only on primary so the service that was running on earlier primary which is now standby it goes down and the service will start running on the new primary which was earlier standby right there is a switch over so on this new primary the service will be up and running so your application or any kind of user must connect to the service this is known as data guard networking and guys if you go to support.dbgenesis.com on this website in the search bar you just type uh, data guard networking and you will get an article how to set up the data guard networking using the uh, failover method so over here you have a service which will run only on the primary server so whenever the database role changes it will detect which database or which server became primary and the service will start running over there that being said so you have a service which runs only on primary now when it comes to db links or any kind of connection to an environment where you have primary and standby you should always connect to this service only you should not connect to the like the primary node or the standby node directly if you do that then you cannot get the benefits of the TAF like transparent application failover so if you want to have the TAF benefits make sure you configure a TAF service the beauty about TAF service is it runs only on the primary database whichever is the primary right and whenever you are connecting to a data guard setup you should always connect through this TAF service only and once again as i mentioned earlier go to support.dbgenesis.com search uh, data guard networking or you can also type TAF and you will get the uh, article where it will show you like how to set up the networking in a data guard environment all right simple straightforward so for this question we have a db link that connects to production server i think remove that production server and the db link should connect to the TAF service so whenever there is a failover or switch over the application or the db link knows like which node to connect that being said let's move on to the next question what are your recommendations on migrating a database from one os to another os so guys anytime there is a database upgrade migrate cloning or movement or migration physical to cloud or moving from one os to the another os moving from one server to the another server moving from one storage to another storage any kind of activity any kind of data movement activity it all drills down to one single question the size of the database because depending on the size of the database these strategies will depend right now that being said for this question what are your recommendations on migrating a database from one os to the another os once again it depends on the requirements what are your requirements and what is the size of the database uh, where the servers are located like one server might be in us the other server might be in singapore then there is network travel that is involved now again these strategies will change now if this is a question where the data center is at one location you have two servers i think you can go with golden gate that's the simplest one i know it adds up complexities in terms of licensing and all so my choice would be between golden gate for server migration or i can also go with armen depends on like the situation requirement and the environment or probably I can also choose uh, to go with data pump if the database size is very small. So different strategies for different size of the database and also if we have tape backups then if can we move those tapes from one location to the another location and perform the restore and if we have uh, sand storage or NAS storage can we take the Armin backup onto the NAS storage which is shared onto the other server and then perform a restore thousands of variations in and probabilities will come up but it all depends on the kind of environment you have so i cannot say but my choices are very clear like in case if the client can afford and if they have golden gate i would probably go with golden gate for the server migration or simple enough you can always go with armen backup like restore and recover 
And the third one, if the database size is very small, I would choose to go with data pump. That being said, let's move on to the next question. I would like to rebuild standby database. Can I rebuild standby anytime or it has to be created only during primary database creation? No, like you can always rebuild the standby database. Now for this question, understand this guys, there is one primary database which is running for years and there is no standby database that has been created. Now the client wants to create a standby database or implement Oracle Data Guard technology. Do you think uh, like client should be able to do it or should not be able to do it, right? On a normal note, the client must be able to do it. Otherwise, uh, it is not possible to recreate the primary database from scratch and like as the question goes like can I rebuild standby anytime or it has to be created only during primary database creation no like you can always rebuild the standby or recreate or add a standby to any running database in the world right and guys to create a physical standby go to support.dbgenesis.com and in the search bar type physical standby and you should get my articles where I show you how I set up physical standby for any client whether it is DBA Genesis clients or whether it is for any external client I mean I use the same method and I have put up the same steps on the support.dbagenesis.com go there type physical standby and you should get a lot of articles on how to set up the physical standby that being said yes you can rebuild recreate or add a standby to a server anytime it's not mandatory that when you create a primary database that time only you have to create the standby database that being said let's move on to the last question of the day what is the frequency at which standby is synced with primary database guys why do you think there is something called as frequency of standby sync like if the standby is created in general the standby must be in sync with the primary right so the sync happens as and when the redo logs or the archive logs come from primary to the standby the standby will start applying them now that being said there is a way that you can add a delay that is known as apply delay so you have MRP process the MRP process can be delayed you can tell that you know whenever we are getting archives from the primary you can still delay the archive apply onto the standby right so when it comes to frequency of the DR sync or the standby sync there is no such frequency as in when logs comes in the standby will keep on applying yes there are thousands of scenarios you can delay you can delay the shipping of the archive logs you can delay the apply of the logs onto the standby yes you can do that now take this as a rebate challenge what I want all of you to do is comment below this video and let me know what is the command to delay the log apply on the standby by one hour all right i'll rephrase my question so i want to delay the log apply onto the standby by one hour so like exactly at 1 pm the archives that are generated from the primary when they arrive onto the standby i want those archives to be applied after one hour so there should be a delay of one hour. So how do you add those delay? Now I want you all to comment the exact command. What command you will use to delay the log apply onto the standby by one hour. All right, that's your DBA challenge. And guys, I think I had these questions for the day. Now let's move on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question. All right guys, I'm back. And this one question I'm getting these days a lot like uh, what is the impact of COVID-19 on to the uh, like uh, DBAs and on clients or what is the trend that I'm personally seeing into the online world so if you ask me personally guys one best thing or one good thing that COVID-19 has done is it has accelerated the cloud adoption understand so many companies were fearing to move on to the cloud but due to COVID-19 they understood that there might be a situation in future where people have to lock down or people have to stay at one location and people will not have access to their offices in that case the physical servers that they 
uh, that the companies are relying on that might become a challenge in future. So accessing their own physical servers, you, we all know like due to COVID-19, uh, all of us couldn't access our offices and couldn't travel, right? So this actually forced small businesses to gain trust on cloud and now they are heavily moving on to the cloud. So like all these small companies, all these small businesses are now running fast to move on to the cloud. Now that being said, like DBA Genesis, as we help companies uh, in database services, remote DBA support, now we are seeing a lot of people contacting us for the cloud migrations. And I also see that trend that very small companies where like they had one simple small server in the office, even they are now moving on to the cloud. So one best thing that has happened due to COVID-19 is it has accelerated the adoption of the cloud and in the near future, like not even, I'm not even talking about one year or, uh, or like two years from now, I'm talking about like uh, within next quarter or next three months, you guys might see a lot of jobs and a lot of projects on cloud. Now, this is your golden opportunity that if you guys can use this lockdown period to read and learn or make yourself uh, comfortable with the cloud technologies, this is your golden chance. What I want you all to do is, if you want to just test it out, go to all the job portals and search for the cloud jobs. Now what you will see is, you will see a trend of a lot of cloud jobs where every company, every small company is now hiring people who are good at cloud. That being said guys, I'll take a leave and I'll meet you all in the next episode. Bye.